Hello everyone! Ah! <laughs> my name is Sophie and welcome to my new video! Woo, whoop. I haven't made a video in a while. Sorry. You know what I read? It took me forever. Crave! <laughs> would like to thank um, Cinderella for commenting under my um, last podca podcast episode to please read Crave. Three hearts. I did. <laughs> you owe me therapy. I also posted on Goodreads that I was reading Crave. My Goodreads is at Honestly Sophie, uh, where I post reading updates. They're really funny. Go check them out. <laughs> Go add me. I'll add you back. We can be friends. Besties. And Book Banshee commented under my update and was like, don't torture yourself like this girl. Oh my lord. And I didn't take your advice, but I wish I had. I finished it yesterday and I have like no thoughts in my head. There's like, my head is so empty. When it was over, my head was empty. <laughs> you know what? In the end, there's like three chapters uh, for... I don't... Actually, I don't know. <laughs> you know? There's like three chapters in the dude's perspective because the last chapter is in the um, dude's perspective. His name is Jackson. Which, you know, whatever that fuck... Whatever. <laughs> Very American. We'll get to it. <laughs> Love America. But what the fuck was it? I was like, I was like, the book is going on and on and on. But then it was like, uh, this is the end. Oh, but wait, there's more. Read on for an exclusive look at three chapters from Jackson's point of view. Oh, I thought it was a preview for the next book, but this is... Well, okay, I don't really care. I didn't read that. Sorry, guys. I thought it was a preview for the next book. That's like 30 pages that I didn't read. Whatever. Didn't even finish the book. <laughs> I didn't want to. Look at how beat up this is. You know how to solve this problem. The other day, you know what I bought? Fucking Kindle. It has nothing to do with uh, Crave. Actually, it does have something to do with Crave because I was hoping that on Kindle Unlimited, Crave would be available, but it wasn't. And I was like, okay, it would be amazing if I could read Crave on my Kindle, but I can't because it's not on Kindle Unlimited. And so now I just have a Kindle. <laughs> Yoo I do also have uh, Kindle Unlimited and the book that I downloaded and I'm gonna read next as you can just tell you right now is uh, called The Serpent, The Wings Oh, there's <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is that? The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Brobe Broadbend I have seen a lot of people talk about that book on my little Kindle. It was Kindle Unlimited. That's why everyone's reading it. Now I'm finally getting the hang of it. When books are getting popular, it's just because they're on Kindle Unlimited. So that's how to get your book popular. And everyone was talking about this on TikTok. And so I'm going to read this. Has anyone read it? Comment down below. Talking about Crave, I don't really want to do it. Listen, I had a really exhausting day, as I said, with work and everything. So I'm going to do some self-care, okay? Don't mind me. We can do this together. Just I just want to settle down a little bit. Gotta do some eye patches if you don't mind. I just kind of deserve it right now. I want to eat a little snack, a little protein bar. Guess my favorite color? Pink, bitch! <laughs> Crave is a book that truly is truly fascinating to me because I have never read Twilight, okay? And a lot of people, well, actually the back, the praise, which if you don't know me, I fucking hate praise. I don't get why we do praise. Fuck that. I don't care what Jennifer Armentrude has to say about any fucking book. You know? <laughs> you don't even read those books. Peace and love. They're getting paid for praise. Allegedly. That's what I think. They're getting paid to just do praise for books and then just say the most generic thing like, you won't be able to put this down and they get like a hundred thousand bucks for that. Allegedly, in my opinion, in Minecraft. It says everywhere, fandom's new favorite vampire romance obsession and then this generation's Twilight. That's what Lynn Rush said, the author of The Touch of Frost series, which I think that's also on Kindle Unlimited. So they're all just joining together, all the Kindle bitches. Peace and love, I'm one of them now. As some random ass authors, peace and love guys, you know, best-selling, New York Times best-selling author, that doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I, I don't care if you are. <laughs> Fave is this generation's Twilight, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, this bitch never read Twilight. You can probably see it in the back, but I do have the Breaking Dawn and the other, and Eclipse, I think, um, in the in the Twilight series. I'm from Germany. Just so you know. It has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> in case you were wondering. 
<laughs> oh, but it's difficult for me to to uh, thrift books in English because the books at the thrift store are in German, and so occasionally I find an English book. Usually, it's some something someone read in school and they just donated it. But I have found Twilight. I have found Eclipse and Breaking Dawn, and so I'm kind of trying to thrift this whole series because I don't want to spend money on it. If you want to send it to me for free, sure. I'll read it and I'll sign it and I'll send it back to you. <laughs> I'll sign it. <laughs> like, I fucking wrote it. But I never read Twilight. And I have heard several people ask me about my opinion on Twilight. I heard. Read. No one ever recognizes me in public. Every time I go into the bookstore, I'm like... Looking around. Look, <laughs> sending them far to YA section like this. No one's ever said anything. <laughs> but... I want to read Twilight at some point, okay? So I'm going in as someone who has watched the Twilight movies. I love the Twilight movies, but I haven't read the Twilight books, which is a different experience. So immediately, this looks very Twilight-esque, the cover. Can you see it? Yeah, you can. <laughs> I fucking hated this book. By the way, I gave it one star, <laughs> just so you know. I don't really understand people. Well, I do kind of because I've, I've been trying to analyze this, okay? I think this book is a very America core, and I've said this about my fourth wing review too, which I did uh, recently. I think that was the last book I read. Go check it out. I gave it one star. This is like in my eye. I'm not being very, I'm not relaxed. So what I said in that review applies to this book too. It feels very America core, and a lot of people hype this up are American. Even though, when I looked it up on BookTok, because I wanted to see what people on BookTok had to say about this book, there was a lot of German people talking about it too. Which maybe I'll just get that because I'm from Germany, so they're like, okay, you're German, why the fuck are you watching English videos? But, um, a lot of German people also really like this book for some reason. I don't- I genuinely don't understand how people like this book. Before we get into it, okay, we'll talk about the America coreness and everything. I want to talk about some basic things. This book has a 3.8 on Goodreads. That's not that good. <laughs> I mean, it's a 4 star basically, but most uh, book talk books I would say are above 4 stars, even if it's low above 4 stars. It's hardly ever beneath 3. Uh, beneath 4, sorry, I don't know math. I was surprised to see this because my impression was that most people loved this and that most people gave it four stars, okay? Maybe I dragged the rating down with my one star. Maybe it was my fault. I'm sorry, Tracy. Tracy Wolf is the author. It's a pen name. Don't worry, it's not her real name. But now that we are talking about Tracy, I was trying so hard to figure out how old this woman is and I couldn't. It doesn't say it anywhere. I tried to figure it out because the book is very... America core and also very millennial. I'm sorry, like, peace and love if you're a millennial, I don't care, but very millennial. And also, it felt very much like someone who's a little bit older trying to trying to sound young. Because the book uses terms like WTF, AF, I don't know what else. I don't remember. <laughs> and it uses a lot of slang terms, and this came out in 2020, and it's very 2020. And it just doesn't really flow nicely. And I th and I think part of the reason is that Tracy Wolf is not a, not 17 years old. <laughs> Tracy Wolf doesn't say how old she is ever. And so I went into her Instagram and I tried to figure it out. So she used to be an English professor. Now she's a full-time writer with over 65 books. Which, like, relax, woman. <laughs> relax! Try to relax like me right now. I'm so relaxed. I'm trying to, like, set the mood for the video so I don't get too angry. But that also makes it worse, that she literally became a professor for English and then she wrote a book like this. Imagine your students reading this. Ein gutes Pferd springt nur so hoch wie es muss. A good horse only jumps as high as it has to. And if you only have to jump this high to become a New York Times bestseller, then <laughs> good. Then you're a good horse. <laughs> this makes her like in her early 30s when she started writing, like, what I would assume, you know, because it doesn't say how long ago she used to be a professor. So I went into her, into her Instagram, found out she's a Libra, okay, that's what I found out. Now, I don't know anything about Libras, I'm a Libra rising. No. I'm not! I don't know, but uh, no. Maybe I'm also, I don't, I think I'm an Aries rising. I don't remember, but one of the three is a Libra. And it's not, it's not, Macap I'm a Capricorn and an Aries and a Libra. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to bullshit on the on the Libras because like we're family. I also found out that she has three children, and her middle child is now this year 
20 years old. So not even her oldest child is 20 years old, her middle child. And it's a little bit younger than me. So if her oldest child is as young as me, I imagine, I don't know when she started having children, how young she was, but I imagine she must be in her mid 40s. That's what I settled on. Okay, also just looking at her pictures, please love Tracy. You look great. That haircut must go. It must go. <laughs> Like that haircut that she has is atrocious piece of love and she's had it for years it's her thing I get it but like I will never understand like I will never understand people who have this haircut never there's all from all of the haircuts you could choose from it's not good <laughs> but anyway you know I think she's in her mid 40s and so when she wrote Crave I imagine she was maybe like in her early 40s <laughs> or late 30s and it reads like that, with her trying to incorporate cool things that were cool in 2020 and cool amongst teens in 2020. It doesn't flow, because for me, at least, I could always feel that there was like a person that wasn't that age trying to write it, and not even close to that age piece of love, you know? You have three children, you're best like all through your slang, but like... I could tell, and so that made it even harder for me to read um, if I didn't already think that it was cringe to begin with. Like, even if someone in their mid-twenties had written like that, that was like closer to that age, maybe closer to that demographic, I would have still thought it was cringe, but maybe it would have flowed a little bit better. But you're also a professor, so I don't really know what's going on there. We just start with the book. I feel like I wanted to say something else about it, but I forgot. Let me look it up. Okay, let's start uh, with the book. Okay, I think this intro was like... 20 minutes long. <laughs> I have to take this off, by the way. I'm, now that I'm gonna rant, I'm relaxed enough. This was amazing. Oh, I'm so relaxed. You know, you wanna see my bookmark for this book? It says depression. It is truly what I felt reading this. So when I went into this, I didn't really know what it was about. I've seen a couple of people recommend it. I've seen a couple of people read it on my uh, recommended page on YouTube. I don't consume book content, okay? But I do get it recommended every now and then. And every now and then I do click, but it's not like I actively seek it out, So I, but I've seen people read it and say, well, I don't know what they said because I don't think I watched a video on it, because I didn't know what it was about, but I knew it was vampire because like, I looked at the cover and I do know Twilight. Um, there's <clears throat> chapter titles in these books. Just the first chapter. Why is it so long? This is like half a chapter already. They're also really cringe. I think everything about this book uh, is cringe to me. And I cringed a lot reading it, and I stand by it. Like, it was... It was a torture to read. And I'm not okay. <laughs> On page 4 already, which page 4 is just you flipping the fucking page, already we have a sentence that goes, Sure enough, I've only just spotted what passes for an airport in this 1,000 person town. Thank you, Google. And I was about damn ready to stop reading this book! <laughs> I didn't even say what it was about. Oh my god, do you even know what it's about? Ugh, I'm all over the place. Grace, the main character, her parents died. Rip. And then she moves to Alaska to her uncle because he's the headmaster of a private school in Alaska. And he's like, you can come here and stay with me and your cousin in the Alaskan high school. And she's like, okay, whatever. Like, I don't have anything left for me at home. My parents are dead. I don't have any friends. She does have one friend that she occasionally texts. And the thing is, this book is a six book series so far. And I think it's gonna be like seven books in the end or eight. So all of this, all of the things that I'm gonna point out maybe get better as the books go on, but I don't care. We're here for the, for, for the here and now for this. I don't care about the future. She moves to Alaska and um, it's a vampire school and werewolves and dragons and witches. And she doesn't know this until like 300 pages into the book. So for all of this beginning, she's just gonna be a little bit obnoxious and oblivious. But I fucking hate the main character. Peace and love, like she's really dumb. So she's arriving in Alaska. I, I, I also felt like Peace and Love, the author doesn't really know anything about Alaska. That's what it felt like. And she just wanted to make it into like a secluded town. But she was like, I can't do it like Twilight, where she comes to f Forbes? Forks? What the fuck is the town called in Twilight? So she had to come up with something different, maybe even more extreme. And so she decided on Alaska. 
period. I don't even know if the town has a name. I do think it does, actually, but I don't remember it. I wanted to Google it, but I forgot. Whatever, we don't care now. Mel, we're already sitting here. <laughs> we're already in it. And she is arriving in Alaska. She's, uh, the plane is landing and she bites her lip. I bite my lip, keep my eyes squeezed firmly shut, even as my heart threatens to burst out of my chest. If this is the end, I don't need to see it coming. She bites her lip because she is Bella Swan. Cause she also bit her lip a lot which i only know because people would make fun of 50 shades of gray for the the per anna gray no <gasps> is her name gray no that's J that's jackson gray who the fuck am i talking about <laughs> just coming up with names <laughs> i'm just shipping everyone like multiverse <laughs> also this philip dude never pulls up again what's he what's up with him the one who landed the plane he never comes up again yeah but what i wanted to say was she just comes up or she includes random facts about Alaska, especially the altitude sickness, which no doubt is a thing, but also no doubt comes up when you Google five things to know before traveling to Alaska. <laughs> and also that it's really cold and that it's because it's so high up that you're gonna be sick because you're, you're not used to that little air or something like that. <laughs> And I feel like I could have told her that. And, and she includes the altitude sickness. I won't talk about it. But she includes that so much in this book. To a point where it gets so repetitive. Because every fucking person mentions it so fucking often. Like, oh, you don't feel good because altitude sickness. Oh, altitude sickness. It doesn't even feel like a real thing anymore. And also, I thought that it had like a bigger purpose. I thought she didn't have altitude sickness, but it was something else because she's also magical and she doesn't know blah 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 that she just reacts differently. But no, she's just weak. Maybe go to the gym? <laughs> I'm near frozen by the time we make it halfway to the in uh, brackets. Thankfully still plowed. Uh, brackets over. Parking lot. She uses so many fucking brackets, especially in the beginning. By the end, she kind of forgets about them, which genuinely, I think she stopped using them because she forgot that she did that in the beginning. Peace and love. Like, whenever authors start out doing something like that and it's not a thing in the end anymore, they just forgot. I know, because I'm an author. Not, bitch. <laughs> Thankfully not. I couldn't take the criticism. <laughs> if someone made a hate video about my book, I would just cry <laughs> forever. So I'm not an author. <laughs> Despite my heavy jacket and synthetic fur-lined gloves, Fuck fake, uh, fuck fake, no, we love fake fur, fuck real fur. She just wanted to make it clear, I do have fur-lined gloves, but they are synthetic. It's a really difficult word for me. Synthetic, love her, love Grace. She's super sarcastic and super quick-witted. I don't really know what she likes. Um, I think she was, the author was going for more like a, a better interpretation that wasn't as maybe whiny. Because that's what I've heard people say about Bella. Again, I haven't read the book, the Twilight books, actually. And uh, so dependent on Edward, which in this book, Edward is Jackson. But she is, like, every time she gets hurt and she wakes up, she's like, Where's Jackson? Where's the vampire? Where is he? Did he die? It's like, girl, he's fine. He's waiting for you outside. <laughs> like, calm down. She, I don't really know what she likes. I don't know what her hobbies are. She doesn't have any hobbies. Uh, she seem, she's kind of portrayed to be a little bit of a smart person, a little bit of a smart ass, but then she doesn't really make any smart remarks. <laughs> like, she's really obsessed with the Northern Lights, and she eventually, <laughs> she eventually goes see them. <laughs> That's something we'll get to. She eventually goes and sees them, but then she's like, uh, oh, they have different colors because of this and this, and then... She doesn't know, like, another fact about them. And she's like, I've been obsessed with them ever since I was a kid. I've read everything about them. And then Jackson's like, well, did you know this and this? And she's like, no, I didn't. I didn't fucking know that. And I was like, so are you obsessed or are you not? Because if I get hyper-focused on a fucking thing, I know everything. So we meet our Edward. He's, he's called Jackson, not like Michael Jackson, but with an X. And this is extremely American. You will not meet anyone outside of the US. Peace and love. Like, I'm leaning out of the window here. I'm almost tumbling out of the window when I say this because someone's gonna come and be like, I know a Jackson with an ex not from America. I don't care. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Jackson with an ex, any name with an ex in the middle instead of the normal writing, America. You know. 
you know they're American. And this whole book is very America. It's very ignoring everything else around you. At some point, they do mention Prague, but just once. So Europe does exist in this world. Can you mention Germany, please, for me? <laughs> Can't you come to Germany? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> we meet Edward, and I think I'm I'm gonna read this out to you, and you're gonna know. You're gonna know the tone of this book without having read it yourself. Maybe you have read it. Comment down below. <laughs> Still, there's something more to him. Something different and powerful and overwhelming. Though I don't have a clue what it is. I mean, sure, he has the kind of face 19th century poets love to write about. Too intense to be beautiful and too striking to be anything else. Skyscraper cheekbones. Full red lips. A jaw so sharp it could cut stone. Smooth alabaster skin. And his eyes, a bottomless obsidian that see everything and show nothing, surrounded by the longest, most obscene lashes I have ever seen. Immediately, she's in love with him. Immediately, uh, she thinks this is the hottest man she has ever seen. And again, this is a book that's marketed as enemies to lovers. And I've genuinely, I'm genuinely so over enemies to lovers. Peace and love. Like I used to, I used to be like you guys, weak, pathetic. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. No, I mean, I used to be very into enemies to lovers. Like, any enemies to lovers would, I would love that. But I've reflected on that, and I think that calling your pairing enemies to lovers when they've wanted to fuck since meeting on day one, then they were never enemies. Because they never wanted to truly kill each other, they just wanted to fuck each other. And I don't think that counts as enemies. They are only enemies if they truly hated each other in the beginning. But these people didn't. So they are not enemies. What are they? Losers. <laughs> he also wants to fuck her. They have this very weird conversation about her not being safe in the school. At this point, obviously, we're on page 20. She doesn't... She, she meets him on page 20. That's when they fall in love. And you're gonna try yourselves as an enemies to lovers. They're just standing in front of... They're standing in front of each other, just looking at each other. And he starts grinning because he can tell that she's like freaking out because he's so hot. And this causes her to not be depressed anymore <laughs> after her parents' death. Annoyance flashes through me at the realization, melting the numbness that surrounds me, has surrounded me since my parents' deaths. Waking me from that stubborn that's the only thing that's kept me from screaming all day, every day, at the unfairness of it all. At the pain and horror and helplessness that have taken a over my whole life. It's not a good feeling and the fact that it's this guy with the smirk in the face and the cold eyes that refused to relinquish. She uses some big words in here to remind you that she used to be a professor but she's not anymore. Why isn't she anymore? Just do both. You don't wanna- whatever. No. Wait. <laughs> Let me finish one thing and then talk about the next. Yeah, she's just really angry is my point. Like, the fact that she's been so numb and depressed the whole time because her parents are dead, understandably she's numb and depressed. And then she sees this hot guy smirking at her and she's like, uh-uh, I'm not depressed anymore. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and then of course, on page 23, we get this iconic line. What little oxygen I've been able to pull into my lungs in the high altitude, because she has altitude sickness, completely disappears with the realization, which only makes me matter. Because seriously, when exactly did I become the heroine in some YA romance? The new girl swooning over the hottest, most unattainable boy in school. Gross. And so not happening. Yeah, I don't know guys. Uh, this book just is super cringe and I'm, you want to have me repeat myself the whole fucking time? There are too many brackets. She says, I mean a lot. That's kind of the thing. Um, it comes across as very disingenuous in my opinion. It doesn't feel real. It, does, it feels like a caricature of a 17 year old girl in 2020. And that's because a woman was writing this who is not a 17 year old girl or not anywhere close to that age. And a lot of people, and it feels just so American. People who love this book, they're the Americans. And I think people who love this book, shout out America. Oh, someone said I shouldn't shout out America anymore. I take it back. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't like this type of writing. It feels very fanfic-ish to me. And that's not a bad thing. But I think that should stay on fanfic sites. Uh, especially because this is a Twilight fanfiction in a sense. It's kind of like Fifty Shades of Grey where they just did an uh, alternate universe. AU, if you want to be 
smart. I know my terms. They just did their own version of Twilight and it got published. And I wish I would be a best-selling author and would never have to fucking work again. And also we get that she has altitude sickness and we get that it's cold in Alaska because she mentions it on every fucking page twice. We get it. We're over it. For some reason, uh, the hot dude called Jackson, we don't notice at this point, but he is called Jackson. Uh, I hate that name. And you also know why I hate that name? Because, like, Jackson? No, same thing. Jackson is a slang word in German for jerking off. <laughs> so every time I say Jackson, that's just what I think of. <laughs> you know? They're talking to one another now, and... I don't know why she doesn't think this conversation as weird. Like, she just arrived to the school in the middle of nowhere and this random dude that's super fucking hot starts talking in, like, riddles and talking weirdly and, like, staring her down. I feel like my... If I were in that situation, I would be like, what the fuck is his problem? You know? I would be like, what is your issue? But she's, like, not like that. She just kind of accepts it. She's like, okay, so everyone's weird here. Just an Alaskan thing, maybe. He quotes Hamlet, which I recently saw in theater, because I'm a cultured girl. I liked it. <laughs> but he quotes it wrong. And then she's like, you're wrong. And then he goes, no, I'm right. And she goes, but I know I'm right. My AP English class just finished reading Hamlet last month, and my teacher spent forever on that quote. We don't care. <laughs> Peace and love. Y'all, we're only on page 26. I've been filming for like 40 minutes. <laughs> for some reason, he says, before something eats you, like he bets someone's going to eat her. And then she goes, seriously, bite me, dude. Because he's a vampire. Bite me, dude. <laughs> she doesn't know he's a vampire. Like, he's going to bite her, obviously. And this confused me because who says bite me? Who says that? If you are an English speaker, native English speaker, no one else is allowed to say it anything about this. Do you say that? Do people unironically like just use this as a term? Because I believe that's a, that it's a saying, bite me. I believe it's a saying. But the amount of times it's supposed to be normal in this book that people say this, her especially, who's not a vampire, doesn't know anything about the vampire world, I don't think people say that regularly. Regularly. Comment down below. And of course he replies to this, nah, I don't think so. Can't even say no. Fuck him. I fucking hate Jackson, by the way. She doesn't end up with him. I googled. I went on the wiki after. We're gonna talk about it later. Because <laughs> I feel like the series is so unhinged. I don't really want to read it. Like, I was debating, should I continue the series and keep making fun of it? But then I was like, it's not worth my time. It seems to be very unhinged. I don't care enough, you know? Sorry. If it was on Kindle Unlimited, maybe, but it's not. <laughs> They're going back and forth. Uh, arguing in the lobby by the way this she just got to school walked into the school and this is happening right there in the middle of everyone and in my head I'm like there's people there people are standing around them and no one's saying anything all of a sudden from angry we go to solemn and sad because she sees that he has a scar in his face and it's a really hot scar and so she goes I'm sorry, I whisper when I can finally get my voice past the painful lump and some of sympathy in my throat. This must have hurt horribly. It's just a scar. It's not that deep. <laughs> Maybe it's that deep because it's a deep scar and it hurt horribly. <laughs> Never mind. But he's just saying, you have to leave, keep your head down, don't look too closely at anyone or anything. And this just doesn't make sense because she got to the school. It's a paranormal school. Her dad used to be a warlock. He's dead, obviously. Also, he married um, her mother and she was a normie. Uh, kind of like wizards in Waverly Place. Well, exactly like wizards Waverly Place. Exactly like wizards in Waverly, <laughs> exactly like wizards in Waverly, of Waverly Place, guys. Exactly like it. He lost his power and then he never told her because they were like, okay, if he doesn't have his power anymore, his child isn't going to have power either. And they kind of make it out to be like a thing that they guessed at. But I feel like this would have happened sometime in the past and they would know for sure. But they're just like, yeah, we guess that you don't have any power either. Like, we just guess. Why don't you know? <laughs> All of the men in this school are super hot, by the way. There's a dude called Flint that we meet. Okay, should I tell you now? No, I don't know if you finished this book. No, I'm not going to tell you what happens with him because I read it online. I thought it was kind of flay. I don't really like him that much. He's a dragon. Um, I didn't really care for him. He's in love. Like, I just, I mean, Flint? 
is not a name I can take seriously. Also very American. Next. <laughs> she goes to her new room. She's sharing it with her cousin Maisie. Maisie. And I think this was kind of like a Wednesday situation where they're like sharing a dorm room and it's like half rainbow. The other half is hers. But she's also pink. She also has a pink room. <laughs> so it's actually not like Wednesday. <laughs> she shares the room with her because her cousin asked her to. The cousin is like the only friend that she has in this book. She has a friend back home called Heather. She doesn't play a role in this book. They text like two times and that's it. So it doesn't really matter. I don't know why she's in there at all. Maybe she does uh, play a role later in the later books when she goes back to San Diego or some shit. I don't know what she does in the other books. I don't really care actually. Don't comment about it. I don't want to know. <laughs> I want to be done and over with this book. And they share a room which is really cute. And then that's where they meet Flint. Flint really wants to fuck. What's her name? Grace, the main character. And we find out that Jackson is named Jackson Vega. And I thought it was funny because didn't I read a book? The Zodiac Academy. The, the girls are also called Vega with their last name. Why? Why are they following me? <laughs> she couldn't sleep and so she was like, okay, everyone told me to stay inside at night to sleep and not go outside alone because people are trying to kill me or whatever. Whatever, they're being traumatic. I'm going to go outside alone. And she meets two dudes that only play a role right here and we get several references in just one paragraph. Uh, first of all, they're outside with no jackets and no sweaters and no hoodies. Just ripped jeans. <laughs> without a shirt and Timberlands it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen and for a second I can't help wondering if this castle like Hogwarts comes equipped with its own very own ghosts ones who died at an 80s rock concert I thought this was really funny because these two dudes are werewolves and it was a uh, full moon they went outside you know for a run in jeans that's an interesting choice skinny Skinny ripped jeans? This tells me Jackson Vega also wears skinny jeans. Mm -hmm. I'm not on a mission to find the best book talk book anymore or a book talk book that I like, but instead I'm on a mission to find a main male character that doesn't wear skinny jeans. Because all of them have skinny jeans vibes, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> Name one character that doesn't have skinny jeans vibes from book talk books. All of them do. Ripped skinny jeans? Even worse. <laughs> Even fucking worse. Jackson saves her from this encounter and he's like, why the fuck did you go outside? I told you to stay inside. She's like, yeah, I don't know who you are. Uh, we talked once and you were weird about it. And I think this whole book, Peace and Love, plays in the span of like a week or two. It feels like it. She does make references to time every now and then, but I didn't care enough to pay like close attention. If anyone knows, let me know. But I think this book... There's not much time passing. She starts fucking Jackson after like three days. <laughs> Max. <laughs> she bleeds for some reason. He uh, wipes the blood off and then he licks it. Um, obviously because he's a vampire. And she says, it's the sexiest thing I have ever seen and I don't even know why. I mean, shouldn't this be totally creeping me out? Yeah. Uh, yes. It should. <laughs> I don't know if uh, this happens before or after. I don't think I have it marked. They have a passage where they talk about Harry Styles or just one thing where they talk about Harry Styles. Now Miss Tracy Wolf is a Harry Styles fan. She did get a Harry Styles birthday present for one of her recent birthdays like in the last three years because I did stalk her Instagram so I do know that. And so they reference um, Harry Styles that they're like dancing to Harry Styles to watermelon sugar. Bitch. <laughs> I didn't- I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> Watermelon sugar? Huh? <laughs> the thing with these references is, if you make them so specific like this, this was so 2020 when the book came out, obviously. By the way, she published the first two books in the same year, 2020. This book and the second book, same year. And then the third book and then the fourth and the fifth, I think she also published in the same year. That tells you, if you see that guys, run. That tells you enough about the quality of the books. And they reference him and this was so 2020. And that's the thing with these references. They make your uh, book, besides you saying WTF and AF the whole fucking time, it makes your book, it, it dates your book. People know exactly like, 
what was going on at the time you were writing this book. Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles. Because no one talks about Watermelon Sugar now. They're talking about the other fucking song. Leave America. I don't fucking know what the song's called. I don't care. Love One Direction. Don't care about Harry Styles. Peace and love. I don't care. <laughs> Macy, by the way, has a boyfriend called Cam. He makes one appearance and several times he's referenced. But every time, it feels like Macy doesn't want to be with him. She wants, She like keeps talking about how she wants to fuck other people. And it threw me off a lot because I was like, I didn't really get where we were trying to go with that. If she genuinely didn't like her boyfriend, but then she was like, no, I do love him. But I, I just didn't get it, okay? It was really weird to me because every time her boyfriend came up, she was like, yeah, whatever, I don't care about him. What's the vibe we're trying to, to like get across? Anyone ever told you you're a lot tougher than you look? My boyfriend, but I think he secretly likes it. Good for him. This is the second time that Macy has mentioned her boyfriend in front of Grace, and this is also the second time she doesn't ask for his name or any other information on him. Which is so weird to me because she doesn't know about him prior to these two times. And then instead of being like, oh you have a boyfriend, what's his name, does he go to the school, blah blah blah, she doesn't ask. She doesn't care. She only cares about Jackson and Jackson him off. <laughs> Macy goes, do you have Netflix? <laughs> and then Macy goes, are you kidding? I live on a mountain in the middle of Alaska. I die without Netflix. Point taken. How about legacies? My best friend Heather and I just started watching last week. Such a weird dialogue, okay? Legacies? Yeah, it's this really cool show about a bunch of teenage vampires, witches, and werewolves all living together at a boarding school. I know it sounds a little silly, but it's fun to imagine. Uh, what? Be a little bit more obvious with your references. The thing is, Miss Tracy Wolf is a huge Legacies fan. I know this from her Instagram. I know everything. I really looked. <laughs> this is also another reference where I'm like, girl, and who the fuck explains legacies like that? Who the fuck- like, I know legacies. I know it's like a Vampire Diary spinoff, basically. The original spinoff. And now I don't want to watch it. And it's so weird because this is the only time they mention uh, watching Netflix together. They don't really have time to do it after anyway because um, Grace is basically hurt and, and in pain for half of the book because she keeps getting attacked. <laughs> but of course, really important, she has massive tits. And I don't really know what she looks like. I know she has curly hair. And it's really funny because I went onto her um, Wikipedia page for Grace. There's a Wikipedia page for every book character. And I went onto the page to look up uh, how she progressed throughout the series because I wanted to know just so I can mention it like later and the f it, there's no picture of her for some reason on my phone which the first thing is usually a picture it just says Grace is black and peace and love I don't think she's black she has curly hair but I don't think she's I think she's Caucasian I don't know if she mentions her skin color at all but I feel like I would have noticed if she if she were black you know maybe she is then peace and love more power to you but also the fan art that I saw she was white so that's not true, Wikipedia page. Oh, I don't know. I tuck on the neckline a little. Try to pull up, it, pull it up in intro three. My boobs are falling out, maybe. So not the first impression I'm going for. It probably looks perfectly respectable on Macy's tall, willowy figure. My big boobs. She literally says, my big boobs. Um, <laughs> make things a little trickier, though. My humongous boobies, my bazookas, they make things so difficult for me. Having big boobs is so difficult. And when she's like making out with Jackson later, she always mentions like uh, flushing against his body with her big bazookas. How big are we speaking? She's not part of the itty bitty titty committee. <laughs> that was really hard to say. They're going to a party. It's like a welcome party for her, but she leaves five minutes in, I'm pretty sure. The whole book is really... There's nothing happening, you know? Like, I don't want to pretend like I'm keeping the plot from you, but essentially it's just her and Jackson. It's like Jackson saving her and them falling in love and in love, and he's like, you, we can't do this, and you're not safe here, and she gets attacked and blah, blah. That's all that's happening with, like, some things thrown in between. She's at a school, okay? She's literally at a high school. It's a boarding school. It's a private school. She goes to class two different times. Or maybe three, maximum. 
Because the rest of the time she's so hurt she can't get out of bed. <laughs> she has like broken legs and shit. She can't go. <laughs> uh, also interestingly enough, I don't know which edition this is. Let me look it up. This edition edited by Liz Pelletier. I feel like it should say this edition is edited by a Liz Pelletier. Whatever it is. Okay, I have no idea when, like, which edition this is, but it was edited by Miss Liz Pelletier. Pelletier. And um, on this page, page 76, she says the word decor, um, or decor, sorry, we're speaking English, decor, twice. Once with an accent aigu, accent grave, I don't know which one is which. One with an accent, and the other one, there is none. So which decor is it? She couldn't decide. <laughs> Liz, you couldn't, you couldn't figure it out. But I feel like if you're an English professor, you shouldn't have typos in your book. <laughs> For everyone else, I'm letting typos slide. If you excessively mention that you are an English professor, you used to be, because it says it everywhere. She mentions it every single time. She used to be an English, English, English professor. She likes to collect English degrees, which that's a weird thing to collect, but to each their own. And then you make this mistake. You don't know how to write the core. And so you just do both versions, like whichever one is right, you can pick. They're at the party now. She's wearing something mega ugly, I think. I don't think Grace has a sense of style. Again, I don't know what her hobbies are. She doesn't really do anything in this book besides uh, pine after Jackson. And Jackson does the same thing for her. We don't know how old he is. I think his brother is like 200. So I would say he's like... 180? <laughs> I don't know. This felt really weird to me. Miss uh, Tracy Wolf is an American from Texas. Austin, Texas, bitch. She doesn't get more American than that, you know? And she is describing these people, what they're wearing. She goes, dressed entirely in monochromatic shades of black and white, designer shirts, dresses, trousers, shoes, jewelry. They, they all but drip money. Which American person says trousers? At this party is the first and only time we meet uh, Cam, which is Macy's boyfriend. Also, Dr. Pepper being Grace's favorite uh, drink and Pop-Tarts being her favorite food. America. America! America! God save the Queen. I don't know. That, I think that's British. <laughs> I don't know the fucking American anthem. <laughs> I don't know. Beer and football. This is this is the thing that I meant. She never asked for Macy's uh, boyfriend's name. And they've talked about him twice before and so they go to this party. Literally, this party doesn't matter, y'all. Everything doesn't matter. And then Macy goes, that's Cam and his best friend. And Grace goes, Cam? She said the name as though I should recognize it, but I don't. And Macy goes, my boyfriend. He's been dying to meet you. Bitch, you've talked about him twice. This is like, she gives zero fucks about Macy. She gives zero fucks about anything but Jackson. At this party, we meet Jackson, of course. He's standing in the middle of the room. For some reason, I don't really know how this is happening. He stands in the middle of the room and is looking at her in front of everyone. And he takes a strawberry, looks her in the eyes and goes like this. It's a warning, if I've ever seen one. And a violent one at that. As a drop of red juice hangs for a second on his bottom lip. I know I should stay, know I should face him down. But as his tongue darts out and licks up the strawberry juice in a very ob obvious screw you to Flint, who we don't care about, and me and everyone else in the room, I do the only thing that I can. And she leaves the party. I don't know. Literally, if I were in a situation like this, okay? And the thing is, this is so cringe written. It doesn't make any sense because she's only talked to him twice before. When she came to school, then at night when she sneaked out and almost got killed by these two werewolves that were running in skinny ripped jeans. And now this party, which is the next day. So this all in the span of two days. Or like a day and a half maybe, because she arrived in the afternoon and then this is like the next night. So it's like one and a half days. And she sees this dude just buy the strawberry. Why, why is she like, I have to go. He's threatening me. Why doesn't she like, why the fuck did you do that? I just don't get why this isn't weird to her. And maybe if it was written better, if they had done some, like talked more, if more time had passed, where they had like an enemy relationship and she could actually interpret this as a threat of him biting her head off or some shit. Okay, we're in Alaska. This doesn't, it's not working. She's running through the castle, the academy that she's at is a castle. She's just running alone. 
And she's like, I have to get away. Just go to your room. No, she's running. I have no idea what I did to make Jake's Jackson so mad. I have no idea why he blows so hot and cold with me. I've run into him four times since I got to this frozen hellhole, and each time it has been a different experience. Douchey the first time, blank the second, intense the third, and furious the fourth. His mouth... Ha, his moods change more quickly than my... Oh. <laughs> I was like, why did I write this down? Now I know. Let me take a bite. This girl is desperate. She is. She cannot believe that this dude is acting this way. That he's be. That he's behaving like a ridiculous man. I don't know. She can't believe it. She's running away. And this is what she says. His moods change more quickly than my bestie's Insta feed. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm unsure. <laughs> this made me put the book down and not pick it up for several days. I have to be honest. I ignore him. Do my best story impression. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Why all? Why do all of these ass books reference uh, Finding Nemo? It ends with us. Crave. She goes for a walk outside and she's really cold because it's Alaska and she has altitude sickness of course. It's all just coming together. And uh, she finds Jackson and Leah, which I haven't mentioned Leah before, she's actually really important. Leah is Jackson's brother's girlfriend, but Hudson is the brother? <laughs> okay. Hudson is the brother of Jackson. Leah is the girlfriend of Hudson. Hudson is dead. He's been dead for a while, or is he? And Leah is his girlfriend, and she's really mad at Jackson because Jackson killed him. So we'll get this reveal later, but basically Grace finds the two of them in, like, in a shed uh, outside of the castle grounds but while she's taking a little silly walk and sees them argue. She's confronts them blah 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 they leave she's alone and then she's like neither leah nor jackson was wearing a jacket and this like is a revelation to her that the next page she doesn't think about anymore <laughs> she's like okay whatever <laughs> sure but maybe you're just weak <laughs> like maybe it's not that cold you know what i mean maybe it's not that cold the girl because there's witches and I don't know if they do spells on themselves so they can stay warm easier outside in the cold of Alaska with the altitude sickness. <laughs> they go to the snowball fight. Flint has a snowball fight for some reason. I, I, this is like the Twilight uh, baseball reimagined. Re <laughs> no one and nothing can ever top that scene in Twilight. We all universally agree on, agree on that, on the fucking baseball scene. Love that. Peak of cinema. <laughs> Macy is telling her to uh, stay away from Jackson and it goes like this and don't worry about Jackson Vega unless you're trying to figure out how to stay as far away from him as possible. Behind her something catches my eye and my mouth goes dry. Yeah well that might be a problem. I barely managed to get the words out past my suddenly tight throat. And why is that exactly? Because I'm not going anywhere and neither is Grace. He's standing right behind her while she says that because it's like, I don't know why. We haven't left that in like 2010. So the snowball fight happens. Jackson does not want to participate. For some reason he has big beef with Flint. And this is because Flint is a dragon and Jackson is a vampire, which she doesn't understand right now because she doesn't know. <laughs> That's why she doesn't understand. But she doesn't get their beef because everyone keeps telling her you have to pick a group. You can either be with Jackson's group or you can either be with Flint's group. You can't be friends with both of them. They used to be friends in the past. Then they had a falling out. I forgot why. We don't care. It's, it's whatever. The snowball fight happens. For some reason they end up in trees and her branch breaks. And then Flint saves her. He all of a sudden is beneath her, like jumped out of his branch and saves her with his body. Now, this is not what happened. Oh my god, it's actually Jackson who can do telekinesis. And he took Flint with his telekinesis and threw him under Grace. Because it was actually Flint who broke the branch. He didn't save her, he tried to kill her. And so this whole situation is really weird to her because she keeps thanking Flint for saving her because she doesn't know. And so he's like, you sure? <laughs> like, I tried to save you, sure. And Jackson is super mad about it. He's like, 
what the fuck what's this about like why did you do this blah 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 and then Grace's like calm down like he saved me and he's like yeah sure he did yeah sure he did but he can't tell her cause she doesn't know he takes care of her cause now after this fall off the tree she's of course hurt again she's super in pain they almost kiss her and Jackson uh, but they don't so you have to wait a little bit longer and then we get the text conversations between her and Jackson when they get each other's number I don't really know where he gets her number from because he texts her first she does not question this she's texting with him she's super excited about it and so we just get intersections of like her laughing and giggling about the texts also he texts with emojis apparently he's a 200 year old vampire allegedly texting with emojis peace and love that's weird and they're texting and she goes yeah well turns out the ankle hurts a little bit and Jackson goes you okay she answers of course BRB I used the promise of Advil to propel myself across the room to the bathroom when I'm done I wash my hands and grab two of the little round pills and a bottle of water before hobbling back to my bed I force myself to take the pills before I pick my phone back up but it's hard I'm dying to know if Jackson texted me back he didn't which is cool I tell myself I mean I'm the one who cut our conversation off so abruptly I'm back no answer sorry that took so long did she take a massive shit why is she saying BRB who doesn't take their phone to the bathroom with them BRB? Just take your phone with you. Why are you ending the conversation? That's how I know a millennial wrote this book. <laughs> like, why wouldn't I take it with me? It doesn't make any sense. Don't you have you have pants on with pockets? You can tell you can text him while taking a poopy poopy. She took a massive chicken. <laughs> Sorry, it took so long. I was just like, I had massive diarrhea. She talks about Oh yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. She's texting Jackson, they're getting to know each other over text. Uh, they never have these kind of conversations in person. They don't talk about anything in person besides they are not able to stay together, blah blah blah. And so Jackson asks her over text, what's your favorite movie? And she goes, at the moment, to all the boys I've loved before. Yeah. I mean, sure, like not that bad, but that's so 2020. And Jackson goes, mine is Rogue One. And it's the fucking Star Wars movie, like the spin-off movie. So random. They talk about favorite songs, and she goes, at the moment, Niall Horan put a little love on me. And then she goes, of all time, take me to church by Hosier, which is fine. And then Umbrella by Rihanna. <laughs> Out of all of the songs in the world, of all time, your favorite song is Umbrella by Rihanna? <laughs> Peace and love. I love Rihanna. I love Umbrella. But I wouldn't- I've never met anyone who was like, Umbrella is my favorite song of all time. And then my Umbrella. Ella. Eh, eh. And he goes, anything by Childish Gambino or Beethoven. Because I'm a vampire. <laughs> he only said that. Or she only made him say that because he is a vampire. Like otherwise, why would he say Beethoven? No reason. Then there's a scene in the cafeteria, I'm not even going to read it out, where he sits next to her and he flips the chair. So he's sitting like the wrong way, he's facing the back of the chair. And that's so America Core too, like high school movie. Super cringe, we just keep adding to the list. She meets his friends from his Oda, which is his close circle of super hot vampire dudes. There's one dude from Spain. And he apparently rolls the R really sexily. Which I'm not sure if that's fetishization, but okay. Because she like doesn't mention anything sexy about the other dudes. She's just like, he rolls the R, which is so sexy. Like they do it in Spain. Okay. <laughs> you wanna hear my accent? You wanna hear a German accent? I don't think you would say the same thing about that. Flint decides to take her to our class through the dungeons. He's like, there's secret tunnels that, that Jackson not tell you and she's like, no, he didn't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'll take you. Don't worry about it. And so he leads her through the tunnel, which they have to go through the dungeons to get there. And she gets super scared because he's like, okay, now you have to go into the cell. And she's like, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm scared. And so Leah shows up. The ex-girlfriend because I mean he's dead so ex-girlfriend of Hudson that is super mad at Jackson 
And uh, she's like, what the fuck are y'all doing here? And he's like, I'm taking her to art. And she's like, oh yeah, the secret tunnel. And then she reveals that it's actually a secret tunnel and not just him trying to put her into a dungeon and lock her in. <laughs> and she's like, oh my god, I overreacted. But he does want to kill her, so maybe she didn't. Maybe her instincts are working fine sometimes. She's texting with Jackson and he starts using emojis. Um, not her describing, like, he's using the rolled eyes emojis, but he's doing a winky face, and he's doing, like, um, I don't know how I can show you this. Where the fuck is it? Here. Can you see that one? Why isn't he doing uwu? <laughs> he should do, like, the, um, the one with the three. <laughs> Why is he using these emojis? I don't really know. He's a fucking vampire, like, at your age. <laughs> There's an earthquake while they are in the dungeon. Uh, later it turns out this is Jackson doing the earthquakes because he's super powerful. I don't really know. Whatever. There, there's an earthquake while they are in the dungeons uh, because he's worried or something for her. I don't really know why it's happening right then. But the tunnels almost collapse and so they run to art class. They eventually make it to art class and Jackson is waiting on the other side like this. <sighs> And he's like, what the fuck did you do, Flint? And Flint is like, I just took her to art class, bitch. Like, calm down. I don't really know. I don't really get their beef. I'm kind of over it. They finally start making out on page 271. Do you want to hear about it? I'll read it out. It's a good thing he's holding on to me because my head spins and my knees go weak and the first swipe of his tongue along mine, just like one of those heroines from a novel. I, I guess she's trying to be self-aware to a certain point. But it's not working. It's The book is too cringe. And mentioning this alone is cringe. I don't know why people feel or authors feel the need to write like this. It never works. Ever. Don't do it. I strain against him, try to slide my arms up around his neck, but his hands are vices on my biceps, holding me in place, holding me still so that all I can do is take what he gives me, which is kind of weird. A little bit controlling, maybe. Maybe. My knees buckle. It's not just our kiss. The earth is actually shaking again. Earthquake! I manage to squeak out, wrenching my mouth from his. Jackson doesn't listen at first, just follows my lips with his like he wants to keep kissing on. <laughs> I keeps I keep on kissing me forever, and I almost let it go, almost melt back into him. I'm a California girl, after all. Bitch. If it were a bad one, things would already be falling off the walls. But it must hit Jackson at the same time. I'm about to forget about it, because not only does he let me go, but he's halfway across the room between one breath and the next. So what happens is they're making out, and then she feels an earthquake, she goes, earthquake, and he's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I want to kiss you. And they just keep making out. And the reason for the earthquake is him. Because he's so horny. Has that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> it's like he's making the earth tremble. He's making the mountains shake. Because they're in Alaska in a mountain. He's like Reese. Mm -hmm. Miss him. Peace and love. Like, I think at this point in the book, if I were her, like 300 pages in, I would just go home. Jackson comes and visits her because she actually gets injured through this earthquake pretty badly. I keep telling you, I keep telling you that it doesn't work like that here. He shoves a frustrated hand through his hair. Don't you get that? You've been a pawn since you've got since you got here, a chess piece to move around the board to get the desired result. But now, now we've upped the stakes. This isn't just a game anymore. And she goes, "I was a game to you." <laughs> Ignore everything he just said. I'm like gonna die. I was a game to you. You're not listening. Peace and love. He's right. He's right. From the moment I kissed you, from the moment you got hurt, everything changed. Because of Fire Nation attacked? You were in danger before, but now he breaks off, jaw clenching, throat working. Then says, Now I've all but put a bull's eye in the middle of your back and dared someone to take a shot. I don't understand. You didn't do anything. I did everything! He moves then, swift as one of those shooting cells from last night, until his face is right up to mine. Listen to me. You need to stay away from me. I need to stay away from you. I think I'm gonna go to bed. Let's talk about it tomorrow. I'm so over it. Genuinely, this book is- it was such a torture to read and this conversation happens like five different times. At least. Maybe even more times. It just wouldn't end. Like, the pining wouldn't end. And this book is 500 something pages long. 
it just wouldn't stop, guys. It wouldn't stop. I can't do it anymore. <sighs> I really need to sleep, guys. I have to work again tomorrow. I fucking... You know what? I quit my job. I did. But I still have to go to work. So. It didn't work. My plan didn't work. <laughs> Let's talk about it tomorrow. I'm gonna... I'm gonna take a little nap. It's gonna be like nine hours long. <laughs> and then we'll be refreshed in the morning. <sighs> Sorry, I didn't manage to do it in the morning, so we're doing it at night. I just took a shower, so join me on my skincare routine as we finish talking about this book. She finally finds out that he is a vampire, okay? Um, this is obviously something that we knew all along. At some point, and I didn't even mention this, he actually gives her a copy of Twilight. He sends it to her room, and then her uh, roommate, who's also her cousin, is like, Oh my god, <laughs> he sent you that? Because she obviously knows he's a vampire. And she's like, oh my god, yeah, we've been talking, blah, blah, blah. I actually like Twilight. And it's very on the nose. And I kind of... I, you know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> it's very, like, in your face, like, trying to make sure that you know that the book is self-aware. It knows that it's being a little bit silly with everything that it's doing. And it's very much orientating itself on Twilight. It's, it's kind of, like, in your face, like, I know... And because I know, you can't make fun of it, but I can. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> At some point, um, she does also go up to um, Jackson and she's like, I know what you are. And it's supposed to be like a, you know, knock off Twilight thing where they're in the woods and she's like, I know what you are, you're a vampire. But instead of saying, oh, you're a vampire, she goes, you're an alien, right? Because you're so hot and you're so strong, like you have to be an alien. And he's like, oh, no. I don't know. The whole Twilight thing, giving her the Twilight book, I didn't like that. I, and it never gets mentioned again, and she's never like, oh my god, that's why you gave me Twilight. Even though I have to say, like, in the end, I started skipping things, so I don't know, maybe she did point it out to him. But uh, this whole book, there's not, there's like no plot going on, and all of the scenes are very repetitive with her getting hurt, Jackson saving her, her being like, where's Jackson? them pining for each other it's not there's not a lot going on and i'm sure that's different for the rest of the series because then we have this oh wait we don't have to really we'll talk about the relationship how it develops in the other books because i looked it up a bitch has gotta know the reason she finds out he's a vampire is because she gets hurt uh during the earthquake where they were kissing she uh, gets hit with a splinter from the window and it uh, like gets her artery in her neck no idea how the fuck she did that and then she has to go to the local nurse who's apparently really weird she goes to the nurse and the nurse is like yeah you almost died jackson saved you he brought you to me why is there nothing in this how this is like the tiniest thing i've ever seen and she's like you have to keep your bandages on for a while because you almost died with your artery nicking your artery and she's like okay whatever but then she's like, okay, this is all a little bit sussy. I'm just going to take my bandages off. Like, it can't be that bad. I just want to see what it looks like. Because I think her mom also died of an arterial wound to her neck. So she's like, even more devastated that it was like, kind of the same fade. And she takes off her bandages and she sees that it's two bite marks. Or two fang marks from a vampire. And so she's like, okay, Jackson is a vampire. He bit me. Turns out, he didn't. He did, actually. Never mind. He did do it, but... He tried to, uh, she actually had the wound and he was closing it up by biting her. And then she went to the nurse and the nurse is also a vampire and she bit her because she's a healing vampire. Love that. So she's a healing vampire. She heals her, but she goes up to Jackson's friend and she doesn't notice yet with a healing vampire. And she's like, where the fuck is Jackson? He's a vampire. I know he's a vampire. He bit me. And then the friend texts Jackson because he's not home right now. And... Jackson's like, no, I didn't bite her. Like, that wasn't me. Like, the bite wounds aren't from me, even though he did bite her. So I don't really know why he said he didn't bite her, because he did. But he said, I didn't. But he did. What's the truth? And they go ahead. He, he comes home immediately, and he's like, who bit you? We have to figure out who bit you. But they figure it out. It was the nurse. It's not that deep. Now, finally, page 300 um, out of 500, basically, we have the reveal. We've been waiting for it. 
I, I couldn't have done it any longer. There were so many obvious hints that it was kind of infuriating that she didn't realize sooner. Believe me, I won't, Mickey grins. The last thing I'm interested in doing is getting in the middle of that argument. Besides, it might be time someone takes my boy down a peg. His best friend wants him to get pegged. Also, I feel like the um, only logical thing of how she got the bite marks was the nurse uh, biting her and being a vampire because it's literally, it's made out to be a huge deal that someone bit her and they don't know who it was. But the only two people who saw her when this accident happened was Jackson, who was with her, and the nurse. So it couldn't have been anyone else. Like there was, there was no possibility anyone else could have bitten her besides one of the two and Jackson said he didn't even though he did so I don't really know why she didn't think of it but that's another thing she's made out to be a smarty girl smarty pants and then she doesn't know shit like this or she doesn't think of shit like this it's just kind of confusing I hate that be consistent either she's dumb or she's stupid there's no in between and then we have a scene bitch she gets hurt again or almost hurt because she's in the cafeteria for lunch and the chandelier because they're in a castle it's a big chandelier it falls down onto her and then Jackson is seeing this he jumps in he pushes her out of the way or he holds her while the channel leaker I don't know he's saving her he gets hurt and for some reason we don't find anything out about vampire anatomy in this book it is said that Tra no not Tracy that's the author <laughs> oh sorry maybe it's a self insert it's said that Grace is really interested uh, after finding out that he is a vampire in all of the vampirology of it, but all of the questions that she asks, um, or the questions that she does ask him and that we see on page aren't really interesting. It's like, do you eat normal food? What kind of blood do you drink? But it's not like, mm, how old can you be? What can kill you? Can you have violent sex? We know he can. He's actually a born vampire how this works we don't know because vampires are supposed to be dead and how are they having children that are already vampires we don't know but this makes him really special and he's like the vampire prince okay we get this reveal in a second so we can talk about it already he's the vampire prince his parents are ruling the vampire kingdom and so i don't understand how that works and we don't get an explanation either and if if we do i don't know it because I skipped it. <laughs> That's on me then. But I don't know how they make children. How do they have semen? Like in Twilight we had a silly explanation. We probably get a silly explanation in this too. But back to the chandelier thing. She gets um, almost crushed by the chandelier and then Jackson saves her and um, sorry I'm flipping you off. And now he's bleeding because he can bleed for some- he has blood in him. I don't know. He's like semi alive I think. And her first reaction is in the middle of this cafeteria where everyone is and witnessed this oh my god i have to do first aid she pulls out a first aid kit out of her fucking purse and starts bandaging up a vampire who can heal his wounds like this wait i can't snap with this hand only with this one <laughs> this is so beyond me i mean with girl you know he can heal his wounds <laughs> or don't you I don't know, and, and then everyone gathers around them and watches for some reason and they're like, oh my god, what is she doing? I don't know if they're gathering because they're like, this is cringe, or if they're gathering because they're like, wow, what is this? We've never seen first aid. But I think it was kind of like more of a thing where it was like really embarrassing because it was in the middle of the cafeteria and he's supposed to be the bad boy and everyone fears him and respects him and then there's this girl just doing first aid on him in the middle of lunch. <laughs> of fear of like third period i don't know she's talking to her uncle and her uncle is the dad of her roommate macy the witch so he must be in like his like let's just say 50s okay he must be in his 50s he goes relax grace i was just trying to lighten the mood macy told me she spilled all the tea you're 50 spilling the tea and I don't think that he said that or it was meant in a way like where he was like spilled the tea like you guys say like in your age. I think he was genuinely just like using or it was supposed to- <laughs> it sounded like he was just saying that. Like it's just in his vocabulary. Spill the tea. That's not something my mom would say. Not that she can speak English but you know. <laughs> I thought that was really funny but he is taking her into his office after the chandelier incident and he goes I think you should go back home to San Diego. 
I don't know where that is on the map. <laughs> and she is absolutely against this, of course, even though up until this point, she has been wanting to go back to San Diego. She's been saying, I'm gonna go back. What the fuck is this? Which I would have gone back, peace and love. Like, pack my bags and go. I've been almost killed three times and I've been there for two days. <laughs> But she decides um, against her uncle's wishes. She's like, there's nothing left for me in San Diego. I don't want to go back home to San Diego. This is my new home. This is where Jackson is. And Jackson, they talk about him. And it's like a big part of this conversation where he's like, you can't just decide to stay here because of a boy. And she's like, I can. And so I will. <laughs> and so she does. Really annoying. It's very typical, like, well, I don't know what's typical because I've never read a vampire book, but it's very much like... Um, just pining after a guy, being dumb and stupid, going dumb and stupid, banking, oh, how do you say, bending over backwards for a guy, and I, why? Because he has skyscraper cheekbones and a massive cock. <laughs> My window's open. Everyone can hear me. It's 2 a.m. <laughs> they're talking about his past, how he got his scar, and actually, no, they're not. Okay, this is gonna take a little while. <laughs> Wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. They're not talking about the scar yet, but they're talking about him being a born vampire and not being made into a vampire. And she goes, wait a minute, you have documented cases of vampires from thousands of years ago? How is that possible? I mean, how can you prove it? And he responds, because they're still alive, Grace. I thought this was funny because it's clearly a lot. I'm, be I'm so obnoxious. <laughs> It's a line where the author is trying to be like funny. She wants this to be a funny scene. The reader is supposed to laugh and be like, <laughs> yeah, because we're supposed to feel like Grace because this is also first perspective. We're supposed to be Grace. And like also thinking like when we're reading this, like, oh yeah, makes it like, how can they have it? And then he's like, well, they're still alive. And you're like, ah, yeah, <laughs> right. But I just thought it was stupid. I don't like people who are happy. I don't like people who laugh. No, I just thought it was kind of cringe. I was like, because they're still living, obviously, but you're talking to a vampire of a vampire family. He's the vampire prince. Of course they're still alive. Hmm. Dummy. Okay, we're, by, we're at the end of the book now, basically. Yeah, that's not. there's not much going on. I think the ending was very, very rushed. It came out of nowhere. And when I was reading it, I was generally, I was at my boyfriend's and he was studying and I was, re I was trying to finish this book. And I just started... Like, I just go, huh? And he was like, what? What are you doing? Are you watching TikTok? And I was like, no, I'm reading Crave by Tracy Wolf. <laughs> I don't want to read about this anymore. We're go I'm going to tell you from the recollection of my mind. This is my favorite part. Whenever I'm over it in the end, and I'm just going to like talk out of my ass. What? I don't know if it's true what I'm saying. I could be lying. You should read it for yourself. Don't. <laughs> don't do that. I do have to look into the book, I don't remember. <laughs> the recollection of my mind is not really supporting me right now. For some reason, he goes up to the to the werewolves, to the shifters. Well, it's also dragons, but um, she's hanging out with Flint and he gets a text on his phone saying, the order, which is Jackson's group, is on the move. And he's immediately like shaking his boots. You know, he's like, I, I don't know what to do. They go for Jackson. She calls out to him because she sees him on the stairs. She goes, Jackson! And he looks at her like this, like a vampire, you know, because <laughs> he is. And then he just keeps walking. They follow them, but they're obviously, the vampires are faster than she, because she's just a human. And he goes up to Cole. Who the fuck is Cole? I don't fucking know. Another American name that I don't care about. I want someone that's called like Gottfried. And then he sh showcases his telekinesis for the first time, where he's like this. <laughs> And uh, Cole is flown against the wall and choking, and he almost kills Cole. But the reason he doesn't kill him, of course, and maybe you can guess it, is because Grace comes up to him and he's like, No, she's like, This isn't you. Don't do this. I know the real you. And so he doesn't kill Cole, he just takes Grace and they leave. Everyone's shook because he left him alive or whatever I don't really know the reason he wanted to kill him I don't understand that either and I forgot doesn't matter <laughs> after this incident they're both really horny so they start making out they almost fuck and he bites her and apparently biting can also be super sexual where she almost comes just from him sucking her blood sure kinky girl okay and now we talk about Hudson his brother 
And he reveals that he got his scar from his brother because they, f- no, because he killed his brother and then his mom was mad. And so he, she gave him a scar because his brother Hudson was older and he was super strong. I don't know if he's as strong as Jackson. I think he might be stronger because he does, Hudson does end up with Grace. Yes. And Jackson turns out to be bisexual and he ends up with Flint. Sorry for the spoiler. I looked that up, guys. I finished a book, and one of my favorite things to do after finishing a book is first of all looking into the authors, and then also looking at how if the series is like uh, already a little bit progressed, to see how it progressed. And so I went onto the uh, wiki, and I found out this like it's unhinged in my opinion. Like he ends up with Flynn. How did that happen? Love it, but how did it happen? And then Hudson apparently is um, Grace's mate. Don't know where the idea of- they already, they talk about mates in this book. I didn't get it. It came out of nowhere. I kind of skipped over that. I was like, okay, maid? Am I reading Sergeant Mas? It's Hudson is her maid and he is supposed to be dead, okay? Because Jackson killed him because allegedly- don't know if this is true. Apparently not because we love him now, so I don't think it's true. He wanted to commit mass genocide. Allegedly. <laughs> he wanted to kill all of the maid vampires, all humans, which is like everyone besides the vampires that were born vampires and so Jackson says he had to take action and take him down and kill him and so he did because Hudson has the ability to make everyone believe what he wants them to believe and that's his special ability like it's Jackson can do telekinesis and Hudson can just make you do whatever he wants you to do and that's really dangerous and so everyone was pro Hudson <laughs> all of the vampires on the vampire queen too and then Jackson killed him. And then out of punishment he got a scar because it's really difficult to scar a vampire and it makes him ugly. But he keeps saying he can't see himself. I just gotta say, I wish we I would read a book where vampires could actually turn into fucking bats. Why don't they do that anymore? Where they have a cape and they go like this and they turn into a bat. Why don't they do that anymore? That's sick. And so he had to kill Jackson, uh, no Hudson and he did. He's not dead. He gets brought back to life because now it gets even more unhinged than this. Because like, all of a sudden they were talking about genocide. I was like, what? Where have I landed? We progress in the story. All of a sudden, Leah turns up, the ex girlfriend from Hudson, of Hudson. Sorry, she shoots both of them. Jackson and Grace. She shoots them. She shoots them, and so they get tranquilized. They are not dead because she wants to use Grace for a human sacrifice to bring Hudson back. And even better, it turns out she was the one who killed her parents. <laughs> really random plot, in my opinion. Um, really weird, because no plot was happening over the whole book. And all of a sudden we get all of this, like people being shot. She's like in the dungeon trapped in- <laughs> She's trapped in the dungeon! Grace is locked in the dungeon and then Flint comes and she's like, Oh my god, you're gonna save me. But he's been trying to kill her too. And so he takes Leah, smashes her against the stone wall. She is almost dead. Then she, t she goes to Grace and starts choking her. What? Honestly, she gets shot, she gets choked and she survives. Already tells you this girl cannot be human and she isn't. But Jackson turns up and after also being shot and he's like fuck you Flint and he almost kills Flint But he survives because they end up together because they are in love Peace and love, you know to each their own and then they escape but Leah wakes back up She isn't dead and then she takes no, it's not actually I think Flint and Jackson fight and sh then um, Grace just leaves and Leah is like never mind. I'm not dead fuck you and takes her to this human sacrifice altar where another fight ensues, it's like every single time Grace does something it says with the last ounce of strength and the last ounce of strength left in my body and I was kind of over a piece of love, I was like I don't, like how much last, how many last ounces do you have? How many ounces are left? What is an ounce in milliliters? Ich bin Deutsch! Eventually uh, Jackson comes and it's, a, it's supposed to be like a s funny scene because I keep saying it's supposed to be because I did laugh. I didn't. I was crying. They're in a room and vampires have to be asked 
like allowed into a room to be able to enter it and so Leah doesn't allow him to enter the room and so she's like haha he can't get to you but then he just breaks in the wall and Leah's like you can't come in here I didn't invite you and he's like if there's no door I don't need a fucking invite breaks into the room fights against Leah but she's already like kind of done the ritual and there's like a mist in the room he can do a vacuum a black hole, if you will? I don't really know. She started talking physics, I was out. I'm, I don't know why we're in a fucking math book all of a sudden. He starts compromising the space, the air in the room, and then he pushes the fog or whatever, the smoke, into Leah, and Leah just disintegrates. She just goes up into dust, and that's it. That's the end. That's how that fight ends, but it's not the end. Because I was so confused about all of this. This is from the recollection of my mind, of course. So I don't know if this is 100% accurate. Because when the smoke clears, someone who can only be Hudson Vega is standing there. A giant broad sword in his hand aimed straight at Jackson's head. The horror on my face must register because Jackson starts to glance over his shoulder. But the sword is already swinging. He is trying to kill his brother who killed him with a fucking sword? Get a gun! <laughs> I mean, he's a vampire, he has to be beheaded, but I would shoot him first, just for the fun of it. You know, be a little bit experimental. Funniest thing happens now that I did not see coming, I did not know that this was gonna be at the end of the book. She sees this happening, and she's like, I turn myself into the way of the blow, and she turns her back to Hatsuna, uh, so she's standing between Hudson and Jackson and she waits for the blow that she know will come and then the next chapter is from Jackson's perspective and they're talking about um, Grace and it turns out that she's not dead and neither is Hudson and neither is Jackson because it's his perspective she turned into a gargoyle a gargoyle I, I only know the gargoyle king from um, Riverdale and I never watched Riverdale but I do like consuming media about it every once in a while where people talk about it because it seems very unhinged to me. I don't know gargoyles. I only know gargoyles from the Hunchback of Notre Dame and that's what I imagine she turned into, like a stone gargoyle that uh, didn't just turn herself to stone but also Hudson to prevent herself from dying and to prevent Jackson from dying. And they're talking about her in the last chapter because they're like, how is it that she's not turning back into a normal human? Um, she should be able to do it, but maybe she's trapped or maybe she's dead. And then Jackson's like, no, she's not dead, blah, blah, blah. She can't be dead. Um, but I don't know what she's supposed to look like. She turns into a gargoyle. Let me Google gargoyle. That's what I imagine she looks like. What's a cool gargoyle? I don't know. What is she supposed to look like? Is she supposed to look like this? I don't get it. I don't- I genuinely- does she just have wings? I don't fucking get it. That's how the book ends. And as I already um, revealed to you, she ends up with Hudson. Apparently they sh they are like in a time, space thing in her mind, trapped in there together. Oh, whatever. I don't really- you know, I don't- I haven't read more of- I don't know. <laughs> I don't know! I just read the wiki! But I did see- Something interesting, because as I said, her wiki says Grace is black, which I don't think is true because all of the fan art is white and I don't think it's mentioned that she's black, but if she is, then, you know, more power to her. When you go into her wiki page, it just says Grace is a demigod, which gargoyle and party human. <laughs> Apparently she's a descendant of the chaos goddess and the gargoyle king. And I don't really know what else. Like, she's a demigod, because why wouldn't she fucking be? It would be boring if she was just a gargoyle, just a witch. We don't fucking want that. And she has huge tits, if you forgot. I wouldn't- I don't want to continue reading this series, because at some point in this book, I was genuinely thinking, maybe I should continue. Maybe I should read more of the series, because uh, this is like- This is easy read, okay? This is easy to get through, because the writing is very easy to read. Yeah, I know my words, but I don't think it's worth my time and I don't care enough because I, when I was reading the wiki to find uh, this information There were a lot of like places and names and I was like, I don't care I actually don't care about the lore of the world. I just care about the, the tea <laughs> Or is it like a kind of like a um, 
harpy thing. Is she like a harpy? Is that a better description, maybe? Is that what she's supposed to look like, maybe? Because that would make more sense to me. Just out of every mythological creature, you choose a gargoyle. I don't get it. Sorry. Peace and love. I don't get it. Okay, what um, do I want to say about this book or that I haven't said already? I think it's very America core. I think it's very cringe. I think that um, Tracy Wolf knows what she's doing and she uh, is trying to uh, make it less cringe by including self-awareness about how cringe it actually is and like with the Twilight um, reference, literally him giving her Twilight, uh, I, I just... I didn't like it, y'all. I don't know what to say. I actually don't know. I just want to go to bed. As I said, my next read will be The Serpent and The Wings of Night. I already put it on my Goodreads at Honestly Sophie. Um, and I'm super excited. I was going to say I'm going to start it now, but I'm not. Peace and love. I don't need to lie. I think it's really cool on Kindle. You can see what other people... Ha How many fucking pages is this? How can I see that? That's a better question. You can see what a lot of people have marked on their Kindle because you can highlight things. Uh, I think that's very interesting because that will give me a whole new world to make fun of. Peace and love. You know, I love you guys. If you like this book, if you like Crave, I think um, it's only okay to like this book if you are aware of it being a little trashy. Uh, then I'm gonna be like, if you're like, I like this book, I know it's a little trashy, but I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun read. Then I'm not gonna sit here and be like, you are dumb as fuck. I would never say that anyway, but I'm not gonna say, sorry, I don't know why you said that. You're not dumb, don't worry. I didn't mean that. I would never um, think, <laughs> period. <laughs> no, I think this is um, valid to have as a guilty pleasure read. Okay, I think it's valid because um, it can be fun, I imagine to read something that's kind of silly and not having to think as much when you're reading this as when you have as when you're reading other books and it's very complicated with magic systems and everything and you're just thinking the whole time that's not really relaxing in my opinion reading is never relaxing well that's so sad alas i'm gonna go to sleep now i hope you enjoyed this video follow me on my socials i have them linked down below uh, you can comment recommendations because after this I actually don't know what I want to read. I just am reading this because it's on Kindle Unlimited. I thought it was fitting that I um, test out the new Kindle. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I love you very much. Peace and love. And until maybe my next video. Bye bye.